and welcome to another episode of Whisking Away with Diane and Jay. I just love nutmeg. It's like I have it in my coffee every single morning. Coffee. Here's the here's the Brooklyn. <laughs> Diana J. I'm Diana and today on this episode it is another Fall Food Friday collaboration with Fallon from Moss Family TV. Fallon uh, started this Fall Food Friday collaboration and I did it about two weeks ago and I was like I have to do it again. It's the last one. Hopefully, hopefully we can do maybe like a winter Food Friday, right? What's your food? Fallon's probably like, listen here, Diana, don't be starting nothing. <laughs> we are going to make pumpkin spice French toast sticks. I tried to say that three times fast. That's how you know I've been trying to practice it. I was like, pumpkin spice French toast um, sticks. <laughs> That's what they are. I know I have a lot of moms that watch my uh, channel. Um, this is so good, especially for you, like if you have picky eaters, it's like they're playing with their food because they take the stick and, you know, they're like, oh, let me dip it into the syrup. It's, it's like a good time at breakfast time. Okay, trust me, you'll love it. So if you're ready to learn how to make this recipe, you know the drill. Let's get our aprons on and let's get, well, we're not baking. Let's get cooking because we'll be on the stove top. We'll actually kind of have to go in the oven for a little bit. So yes, let's get baking. <laughs> Okay guys, so let's get started. So what I have in my bowl here is a half a cup of milk as well as a half a cup of heavy cream and one egg cracked in. I'm also going to add my vanilla. I'm using vanilla paste. Why am I shaking this? Like it's um, liquid vanilla. It's um, vanilla paste. I love using vanilla paste at times because it has the vanilla um, seeds in there and it just makes it look so pretty. So I'm putting in about a tablespoon of that. To that, I am going to add three tablespoons of brown sugar. Depending on how sweet you want it, you can add more or you could add less. I find that three tablespoons is a really good balance. Now for the star of the show, we are going to add in some pumpkin. Um, you want the pure 100% pumpkin, not the pumpkin pie mix, just plain pumpkin because we are gonna add all of those great spices in there. So for me, I'm, I have some in the Ziploc bag here. Once I open it, I like to keep it in the fridge to make my pumpkin latte. Hold on, si sirens. Welcome to Brooklyn. Just gonna go on and wait till that ends, they pass by, okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. Back to the regularly scheduled program. Okay, so I'm going to add in a quarter of a cup of um, pumpkin puree. Now, it depends on how much you like pumpkin. You can add a half a cup, you can add a third of a cup. It's up to you. Guess what, we want all of that. So all of that goodness, that stuffing. Now I'm going to add the spice part of the pumpkin spice French toast steak. We're going to add in some cinnamon and nutmeg. So I'm gonna add in a half a teaspoon of nutmeg, a hefty half a teaspoon. You know, hefty is like a little bit more than half. <laughs> I just love nutmeg. It's like, I have it in my coffee every single morning. Coffee, here's the, here's the Brooklyn. <laughs> I have it in my coffee every single morning with a tad of cinnamon. It is like Christmas in a cup every single day. I'm telling you, it, it's, it, I love it. <laughs> um, cinnamon, hefty teaspoon, half a teaspoon, I mean. I'm also going to put in a quarter of a teaspoon of ground ginger. Cool beans. And if you want, you can use pumpkin pie spice. Um, just about a tablespoon of that in here. Um, but I just usually like to add a little bit more nutmeg, a little bit more cinnamon. Yeah, pumpkin pie spice mix would be just as good in this recipe. I'm also going to add in a pinch of salt like an eighth of a teaspoon. You need that salt. Whenever you add salt into anything you're baking, it actually enhances those flavors. So the pumpkin flavor, the vanilla flavor, the cinnamon, the nutmeg, it'll all be like a first flavor once you take that first bite. Trust me, always add salt to your baking dishes. Not too much salt, just just pinch. <laughs> or what the recipe calls for. <laughs> so now I have my whisk. I'm gonna go on and whisk that bad boy together. Sometimes 
the cinnamon may clump up, so just make sure you whisk it really, really well. Okay, so this is what it's supposed to look like. Make sure we break up all of those cinnamon pockets. OMGs, this smells so good, guys. Let's head over to the stove. Okay, guys, so I'm going to put my fire on like a medium to medium low. Well, like medium. Let's just do medium because we do want that outer crisp. Let's talk about the bread. So what I'm using is a um, challah bread. You can use any type of egg bread, either challah or brioche. I feel or find that it works really, really well when you're making fresh French toast. If you don't have it, it's perfectly fine. You can use sliced bread. The only difference is you would not um, leave it on the stove top for as long because we don't want it to burn and you wouldn't have to put it in the oven. So what I want to do is just soak them, make sure it's each side of the toast has some of that yummy custard. So I'm gonna put some butter. You don't wanna crowd the pan too much. A little bit of an orange color, pretty cool. So every minute or so, I just double check under it to see what it'll look like. Um, I like mine's a little darker, so I'm just gonna leave that in there for maybe 30 to 40 more seconds. Now the only thing with the French toast sticks is you do want to flip it four times for each corner. It's not like regular French toast where it's one side and you flip it, you're gonna have to flip it four times. So this side is pretty good, so I'm going to flip it on the opposite end. So that was about four, three to four minutes. And then I'm only going to keep it on the flip side for maybe like a minute and a half. All right, so I'm going to do the other side just so it could be on its side. And when I flip it on the other side, I'm literally only going to do it for like 30 seconds. As you can see, I cut up some more because I had some custard left. I have about a half a cup, maybe three quarters of a cup left. And make sure you mix. What happens is some of the spices tend to sink to the bottom and you want those spices inside the little thing. Oh shoot, I forgot that minute and a half. Hold on guys. See with me, I'm not just be chatting, 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 chatting all the time. So the French toast. They are finished for the stove part, the stove part, the stove top portion. I'm just gonna pop it into the oven. The inside is cooked thoroughly without compromising um, the outside of the French toast. Because if I would have kept it on the stove top, it would have been a bit too crispy on the outside. Let me tell y'all something. I then whipped up some cream, cooked up some bacon. <laughs> I have some apple and my French toast sticks. And my, what is it, maple syrup. Bring all over here and on the bacon. It's hard here. Oh, it's so soft and fluffy. Divine. Oh, so good. So good, delicious. The pumpkin is really subtle. If you want, you can add more pumpkin to enhance the pumpkin flavor, but let me tell you something. Absolutely delicious. I hope you guys try this recipe. It's so good. <laughs> let me know in the comments below what you think. Until next time, guys, I'm gonna finish this. Have a good one.